Hi everyone. So I was just about to make one of my typical on-hand recipes for homemade vegan healthy ketchup that actually tastes really good. And I figured why not film it while I'm making it um, and just share it with you guys because why not. So I have in this bowl in the sink you can see, please ignore my really puffy swollen arm. My tattoo is still healing. But you can see I have tons and tons of tomatoes in here. I actually have two packs of cherry tomatoes and two packs of grape tomatoes. Um, they're not organic. They really should be because tomatoes just get a lot of pesticides on them. But the organic ones were insanely expensive. And um, don't like the fact that you can't afford organic deter you from eating fruit and vegetables. But I've got this stuff that's veggie wash. And I just... Spray that in there a few times and turn on the water, kind of roll them around as the bowl fills up. Um, this vegetable wash is it's all natural, it's made with like citrus and it smells, it smells really good. Uh, but just kind of mix them around in there, rub them, that's right, rub the little tomatoes. Anyway. Just let them rinse for a few seconds, minutes, really whatever you want, and then drain them. Okay, so now um, that you have them washed and drained and everything, put out tin foil on a pan and then put them all on the tin foil, aluminum foil, metal wrap, whatever you want to call it. Do that and then take a full sized onion. Peel it, prepare it, and then chop it into slices or um, chunks, whatever you really want. And then you're going to put this on, like the chopped onion pieces, on top of the tomatoes. So after I get this guy cleaned and ready, I will show you what to do next. Okay guys, so as you can see, I have cut these onions into some pretty decent sized wedges, but I just threw them on top of the tomatoes in here. Close the oven. Make, yeah, make sure the light's on just so you can see. And then set it to between 400 and 450, kind of depending on what your oven is. Um, I don't really like telling people specific lengths of time or temperature kind of for cooking because I really think it's something you have to go by. You know, like my husband, he really wants to follow recipes. And, you know, when, if we bake Christmas cookies and stuff, he's checking them the moment that the recipe says they should be done. Me, I can smell when they're done. I can be in the living room and I can... <laughs> All right, cookies are done, you know? It's just kind of a, a thing. Over time, you get used to it. Like, he really wants me to give him a list of, like, herbs and spices to put in something. I'm like, yeah, what do you feel like? You know, just throw a little of that, a little of this. But, yeah, so I'm going to put mine in about 425. Um, and then you want to bake it. And you know they're done when the onions are browning, but mainly when the tomatoes start getting wrinkly. Uh, the cherry tomatoes will most likely kind of pop open a little bit, but when they start getting wrinkly and stuff, that's when you know they're done. So, I'm just going to go work on a research paper for like 40 minutes-ish. I'll check them probably in like 30. Anyway, bye guys. Alright, so I just pulled these out of the oven and this is kind of what they should look like when done. Um, I should warn you, be really careful because this is all liquid down here. You know, there's a lot of liquid and stuff, so you might get some dripping. But what you're going to do next is you're going to take all of this stuff and you're going to put it in a blender. So I should mention that this recipe is basically the exact recipe from the Chocolate Covered Katie site. For those of you who've never been to her website, go check out Chocolate Covered Katie right now. She makes all these different desserts and recipes that are fantastic. I think basically everything is vegan because she's a vegan, but she also has things specialized for people with nut allergies, gluten-free desserts, raw desserts, sugar-free desserts, all those different stuff. You know, it's all they're all just healthier dessert options and they're fantastic and delicious. So, go check her out. I've made a few of my own tweaks to it, but not much. So, you've got everything in your blend, in the blender right now, the that you made in the oven. 
Then what you're going to do is you're going to add as much salt as you want. I only add a pinch of no sodium salt just because my digestive system doesn't really like salt or sodium for that matter. Um, so add however much of that you want and then whatever kind of sweetener you want. I usually add about two of the little packets of sugar in the raw or just like two or three teaspoons of some kind of sugar um, because that's all the sweetness I find that this recipe needs. Then what you're going to do is you're going to add ginger and powdered ginger. I guess you could try fresh ginger, but that might be a little strong. Um, I, I couldn't tell you exactly how much to put in. I usually do a couple good shakes of this, uh, maybe two to three teaspoons, and then you can always add more later. And then a few tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. This is really, really, really important in the recipe. Apple cider vinegar. Add about, for the size that I'm making, which are two packets of cherry tomatoes and two packets of grape tomatoes, I'm going to add maybe three or four tablespoons worth of apple cider vinegar. And then, since I don't have any fresh garlic with me now, I'm going to add a bunch of shakes of garlic powder. So you'll want to blend it and you'll want to puree the crap out of it, otherwise you'll get kind of like these little stem filament type things from inside the tomatoes. Steam. I don't know if you can see the steam. Can't see the steam? Well there's steam! And a mess. It's always a good idea to taste it and make sure you like the way it tastes. Let me see. I gotta stick my finger in and see. Oh, it's hot. That's really good. Okay, so then at that point is when you add more sugar, more salt, more apple cider vinegar, more ginger, whatever you want. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take all of it and dump it in a container. I usually use, ignore my dirty dishes, I normally use something like this, as you can see, what I used. You dump it all in there and you let it sit uncovered in the fridge for several hours. Or if you like hot ketchup, you can just have at it. But if it sits in the fridge for a few hours, it'll thicken up. Yeah, that's that.